So the bed canopy has been holding up great for me so far. It's been very windy and we've had a lot of rain, but it's doing great. And I think it actually looks kind of pretty in the garden. So who'd have thought I would use a bed canopy for a vegetable bed, right? But so far it's working great. I've already seen one cabbage moth and I felt pretty good that I had all of my little broccolis and cabbages protected to keep her from laying her eggs on my vegetables that I've been working very hard on for at least two months now. So anyway, they're doing great. So I'll leave a link here for you if you'd like to check out how I have used uh, various things in my garden in the past to protect them from insects and animals. And of course, this is something new for me this year, so I'm pretty thrilled about it. And it looks like I have some turnip greens ready to harvest. In the south, we like to grow turnip greens, and we don't grow them for the root, so for the turnip at all, we grow them for the greens. So these are called seven top turnips, and it looks like they are ready to harvest. This was the first thing that I planted in my garden this year. So I like to move my plants into my garden when they're very young. I don't like to have my plants sitting in um, a container or cells too long because I feel like it stunts their growth. So as soon as I can move them out into the garden, I like to get them moved out. Now, I don't move them all out because you never know what's going to happen. You don't know if there's going to be an ice or um, snow or something, and it might harm them, when they're especially when they're that small. But I do um, enjoy having them moved out into their natural environment as soon as I can get them out there to keep their growth from becoming stunted and having, you know, root-bound containers. So I'll leave a link here for you too just to kind of show you how I start my um, seedlings every year and you can check that out. So here's the broccoli plant that I just showed you that I planted and it's doing great now. So it's been about three or four weeks and I've been real impressed with how well it's growing. So if you like the idea of using a bed canopy, maybe if you think you can use it in your garden as well, you can find these on Amazon. I picked mine up, um, gosh, it was some kind of department store going out of business about four years ago. So I think my bed canopy is almost too big for my little 4x4 four four bed, but I think it would easily cover a bed that was, uh, let's say, 4x8. So you can find these easily on Amazon, and I haven't purchased any on Amazon, but if you want to check them out, go ahead on over there. Some of those I uh, saw that they said they don't have slits in the side of them, and I do think that's pretty important. I think it makes it easy for me to get inside the bed and work with it. So just read your reviews on there, and they don't look too expensive. They look like a lot of them have free shipping as well. So. Um, if you like that idea, that might be something that you could try. So at this point, I'm pretty much going to be watching my broccolis and my cabbages for slug damage. And if I notice that there's any slug damage, I will go ahead and side dress my um, plants with a little bit of slug bait. I like to use slug bait, and I know some people may think that there's something wrong with it, but it, there's nothing wrong with using slug bait. I have used a lot of other things to try to control slugs in the past, like, you know, the little beer and a frisbee if you've ever heard of that it's supposed to trap them in there and they drown that worked for maybe two slugs and then the rest of them had a field day with my vegetables and then I've tried copper and that works if it's sunny outside but you know slugs don't move around when it's sunny outside so because copper heats up and the slugs don't like the heat but at any rate I know this works and so that's what I use so I want to show you too what has survived um, the snow over the winter. I left a few things in the garden because I wanted to see how um, they would do um, the following season. Now right here, these are Georgia collards and it's an open pollinated variety of collards. So I'm actually letting these go to seed and I'm going to save the seed. Collards are a biennial, so they set seed the second year's growth. And then I also have some kale. And the kale overwintered fine as well, but it is going to seed too. I will pull this out because I don't want to risk it cross-pollinating with my collards because I'm going to save the seed for the collards. Now, this is some cilantro, and I showed you how to grow cilantro. This overwintered in my garden beautifully. It really took off. They were just tiny, tiny plants, I guess around in February, and now they just have just taken off and look really nice. 
in my how to grow cilantro video I did not cover that these would overwinter because I did have some plants in my container garden that did not overwinter they died as soon as it got cold so um, but do know that sometimes your cilantro will go ahead and overwinter and survive through snow a lot of snow <laughs> now this is the Greek oregano plant that I showed you in February so this is its second year's growth and it's looking wonderful this year so I'm real happy with it and I talked about um, what's called sleep creep and leap in an earlier video and that just kind of uh, will point you in the right direction when you're growing perennials and you can um, know what to expect their first second and third plus years okay now my strawberries are starting to bloom this is a variety called quinault and it is what's called an ever bearing strawberry so it's supposed to um, produce strawberries through the spring and fall. I've been real pleased with the production of this plant. I bought one plant, I guess it was probably three or four years ago now. It was just one plant and I cannot tell you how many runners that plant has sent out. So that's the kind of the beauty of strawberry plants is that they will send out runners. So I just showed you a couple of strawberry blooms and whenever my strawberries start to bloom I like to side dress them with what's called a potash fertilizer. And this will help the plant develop nicer and fuller strawberries but I only side dress them when they're showing a bloom because um, strawberries do like and prefer a more of a acidic soil and um, potash will actually raise the pH of your soil but you know just know that if you do use a potash fertilizer to use it sparingly and only when they're blooming okay now I ran out of my strawberries alive fertilizer that I just showed you and that's something that I've been using for a very long time and this year I'm just going to go ahead and make my own potash fertilizer. I'm using some wood ashes from my wood burning stove at their little place that we have at the river. So last year I went ahead and transplanted some of these runners out to the river garden and let's see I moved let's see four five six seven eight nine ten 11 12 plants out there okay and then I went out there last week this is the first week in April there are so many runners now and so I've counted them and there were well over 50 so there are so many plants now I have so many plants I went ahead and um, also put out a little bit of slug bait because that's one of the problems that I will run into with uh, strawberries that you grow on the in the ground however I really prefer growing strawberries in the ground versus a raised bed because the first time I ever grew strawberries I put them in a raised bed and you know I wasn't it was my first time really gardening or growing strawberries I did not anticipate how many plants I would get out of just one or two strawberry plants. So that's the beauty you know of growing strawberries is that they set out these runners and then you can have all of these free strawberry plants. So now I have about 60 total plants at the river garden and um, I will leave them there for three or four years and then I'll pick out the ones that are nice and healthy and I'll move those to another area where they can continue to grow because you really kind of need to um, rotate those strawberry crops I don't know every three or four years okay so I'd also like to invite you to head over to my channel where you can click on playlist and over there I have some recipes for strawberries and kind of give you an idea of ways that you can use your strawberries and uh, I have recipes actually for a lot of things that you might be growing in your garden so you can search for specific recipes to kind of give you some ideas for different herbs and vegetables okay so here um, I have some echinacea that's coming back beautifully I also have some ter French tarragon and that is one plant that you have to grow from a transplant you can't grow it from seed but this is the second year for it so I was glad to see it coming back and then in earlier March I showed you that I was going to sow some seeds for spinach and so those are already up and growing and my carrots are up as well they're looking pretty good and my dill is also up. I showed you that I went ahead and sowed some seeds for that in my native soil. So I was really glad to see the dill popping up. I love dill in the spring. My sugar snap peas are up as well. And I lost a few onions over our spring break. I wasn't able to keep the onions watered so that they could root down. But it looks like I have a few, so that'll be nice. And then I went ahead and also 
planted some more spinach. So in my how to grow spinach video, I showed you that I like to succession plant spinach so that I'll have a continuous harvest. My lettuce is also up and I've planted this not only in my raised bed here in the garden, I've also planted this in my container garden. I always like to have lettuce planted somewhere. It is just nice to have lettuce around. So you'll always find that in my garden somewhere. Now this is funny because I was going through my seeds and I pulled out an old pack of arugula seeds and they were more um, dated 2008. <laughs> so I guess these seeds were about eight years old and I thought, well, they're probably not even going to germinate. But of course you know they did. <laughs> so I dumped them out in the soil and lo and behold, I guess a week later, they are everywhere. So I don't know if these leaves are going to get very big. They sure do look crowded. But anyway, so there you go, arugula has a long seed life. <laughs> All right, and so I also planted potatoes. I'm growing Yukon Gold right here, and I have about three other varieties that I'm growing in other gardens. So I'll be looking for some potatoes to popping up there soon. And now this is one of my windowsill boxes where I started a lot of my cool season vegetables. I actually started three windowsill boxes for cool season vegetables. These really did a lot better than one of my other boxes and I think it's because I used a different seed starting mix in here. Uh, the difference was this one had uh, a lot of good drainage in it. It had a lot of perlite and so I think that the drainage really helped it out a lot. Anyway, um, I moved some calendula into my garden. That's what I was growing here on the end. So the calendula is a nice cool season. Um, flower. It's like a pot marigold and I also grow this in the fall so it really likes that cool weather. And I was running out of room in my uh, raised bed so I put a Napa cabbage. This is a Chinese cabbage. I put that in my native soil. And now for my blueberries. My neighbor offered me a couple of wheelbarrows of some horse manure that has been composting for 18 months and it was full of worms and so I immediately went out and cleaned around my blueberry bushes and got my son to help me. We um, side dress my blueberry bushes with some of this horse manure and I really have not been taking care of my blueberry bushes. I'm ashamed to say but um, I've let them get overgrown and I haven't been feeding them or anything and I may lose one or two of them. We'll just have to see but anyway I'm giving them a little bit of TLC this year. So there we go. I side dressed my blueberry bushes with the composted horse manure which is supposed to be very good for gardens. So this is my pomegranate tree or bush, whatever you want to call it, and it's filling in beautifully. I've had some questions about my peppers that I overwintered in my garage, and they're doing great. I did show you in February, I think, that I had lost one or two because I didn't harvest them first. Um, I left peppers on there, and they dried out on me. But here's my jalapeno pepper plant, and I actually have a pepper on there. I should have taken it off. But they're starting to show a little bit of new growth. All of the peppers are. Um, the one problem that I have had a little bit of issue with are what are called white flies. So I've been spraying them with uh, a product called Spinosad, which is improved for organic gardening. Um, so I sprayed my peppers with that to keep the white flies from taking over. And here is a Meyer lemon tree. And I keep showing you guys this because I'm so amazed that all, through all of the neglect, this tree is looking so good. So I just haven't seen any um, little Meyer lemons yet. That's what I'm looking for. I see a lot of leaves and a lot of blooms. And so now I want to see some fruit. So we'll see how that goes. So I hope you found something in this video that you can uh, use in your own personal gardens. So thanks so much for watching and y'all have a beautiful day. Mm -hmm.